Let's go to CTV's Glenn McGregor, who is standing by in the Capitol. Glenn, what are you hearing? Yeah, sources, Todd, telling us that the Liberal caucus will have an emergency meeting tonight at 5.45 to discuss the fate of Jody Wilson-Raybould and Jane Philpott, the two cabinet ministers who resigned over the SNC-Lavalin affair. Uh, they are, uh, the, the full Liberal caucus are expected to discuss this in, behind closed doors and try and make their case to the Prime Minister, who will be listening in and ultimately making the decision on whether or not they should stay or go. Now, some of the regional caucuses have been meeting today. These are smaller groups uh, based on... on um Provinces, so the Ontario caucus, which is the larger, largest Liberal caucus, had its meeting this afternoon. Jane Philpott showed up for that meeting at the start and then left about 10 minutes early, uh, 10 minutes later rather, and didn't really say why she was leaving other than to say she uh, didn't want to talk about it out of respect for her colleagues. So obviously that was being discussed there as well. Uh, a lot of Liberals, Todd, as you know, very unhappy with both women, especially with Jody Wilson-Raybould, recording privately this conversation that she had with the clerk of the Privy Council when they discussed a possible plea agreement for SNC-Lavalin, and then, of course, releasing this to the Justice Committee, which then made it public and has caused no end of headaches for the Prime Minister and his government. So a lot of frustration. Uh, Liberals really feel, though, that this is the thing that they are the most uncomfortable with, the fact that she would record secretly record a conversation with a senior bureaucrat like that and then use it uh, effectively uh, to make her case against the government in this situation. They are not comfortable with that, and a lot of them have expressed that they do not feel she should be sitting in their caucus any longer. Right, and we, I even heard uh, one uh, member of cabinet, uh, Francois-Philippe Champagne of Quebec, Minister of Infrastructure, uh, directly addressing that, Glenn, and I know you did as well, the idea of sort of taping conversations and, and what that says, what it doesn't say. We have this letter uh, as well from Jody Wilson-Raybould in which she uh, openly implores uh, her caucus members, her fellow Liberals, to uh, live up to those Liberal ideals that got them elected in the first place, a different way of doing politics. It is a lengthy letter. She goes on to talk about how she's hurt by all of this, uh, but that she feels, you know, the Prime Minister still shares the original vision that the Liberals have. She defends her actions, uh, and, and she goes on to say, I plan to run again for re-election as a Liberal candidate mm -hmm. in the riding of Vancouver Granville, and my nomination has been confirmed. So somebody's got to give here, Glenn. Yeah, and that's not really a change. She's maintained throughout this that she intends to seek the Liberal... Uh, or it will be a candidate for the Liberals in Vancouver Granville in October 2019. Uh, but the thing that has changed, I think, Todd, is the tone. And when we caught up with her, our cameras caught up with her last night, she seemed a little more... I wouldn't say contrite, but she seemed to be taking a much softer, gentler tone. And she said, yes, I really want to stay in caucus. I don't think I should be kicked out of caucus for acting on what she felt was principle. Uh, that theme is repeated in the letter, and she's calling on uh, other Liberals to uh, understand that, that she was acting on principle and that uh, she wasn't trying to embarrass anyone, but she felt it's important that their party stand, stand for truth above all else. Uh, and uh, how that letter will be received by her caucus colleagues, we'll see this afternoon or, or this evening, early this evening when they all gather. Now, what we don't know about this meeting is whether or not J uh, Jane Philpott and Jody Wilson-Raybould will attend. I expect they will, and they will be given an opportunity to make their case to the entire caucus as to why they should, why they should, uh, should be allowed to stay in. There will be lots of harsh words, I'm sure, said. Some of those uh, MPs that we heard from, especially yesterday, were very heated. Wayne Easter, veteran Liberal MP from Prince Edward Island, who had been a Solicitor General at one point, he was saying she should be out, actually gesturing with his thumb, uh, emphatically saying she's out. Others were more measured, saying they want to hear what other people in caucus have to say about it. But there is clearly uh, a, a very strong desire to act on this, especially amongst the Quebec cau uh, caucus. That is apparently uh, the most firm in, uh, I have heard, possibly unanimous, uh, that Jody Wilson-Raybould, at least, has to leave because of the things she said and how damaging it is for the, the uh, party's prospects in Quebec because, of course, SNC-Lavalin, a major employer in Quebec, a point of pride for a lot of people in Quebec, that engineering company, uh, and the Quebec Liberal MPs are not happy about this at all. Yeah, no, it's such a great point, and they know they're going to likely lose seats uh, in Western Canada, so they need to hold on and build, yeah. possibly, on those seats in Quebec if they have any hope of, of forming another government. 
government as well, given that they could lose some in Ontario. So you see the politics playing out. This is what's so fascinating. There is the right. principled stand of Jody Wilson-Raybould, or so she says in this letter. And on the other hand, the Liberal MPs are saying, well, it doesn't matter if we're not actually in government uh, come October, so you need to keep your keep your eye on that whole thing. And, and I guess the other thing that's really interesting, Glenn, is if they push her out, there is this backlash uh, in, in terms of these mm -hmm. this woman, mm -hmm. maybe uh, Jane Philpott well, well, as well, being yeah. pushed out. And on the other hand, if they don't, then you have this situation, a constant reminder over the next five months of these two women who uh, quit cabinet. L let me add a quick thought to that, uh, Todd. Uh, tomorrow, the caucus was scheduled to meet tomorrow morning, as they normally would on a Wednesday morning, and everyone thought that's when that discussion would happen. However, there is an event called Daughters uh, uh, of the Vote tomorrow, which is a, a event organized to encourage women, young women, to get involved in politics. It's a big deal up here. Uh, a lot of MPs are very proud of this. Uh, young women and girls are brought up to the Hill to try and encourage them to, see, to, to pursue careers in politics. And I don't think the government would want that day to be the day where they decide that Jody Wilson-Raybould and Jane Philpott should be kicked out of caucus. So that's possibly the reason why they're doing it tonight, having this emergency meeting, not tomorrow. The other thing to talk about here is what happens to those two women if they're kicked out. Uh, their electoral prospects do not look particularly good. Party support is extremely crucial. Financing, backing, access to party databases, those sort of things. If they decide they're going to run as independents, certainly they've got a lot of notoriety from this whole SNC-Lavalin affair, but uh, whether or not it's uh, enough to get them re-elected and beat whoever the Liberals install in their writings, probably not. So those, their careers could be effectively over uh, if they are voted out. And just before we go, Glenn, I mean, what a mess. Uh, I believe Thursday will be two months. And I mean, the whole way yeah. this has been handled or mishandled, and it's not going anywhere. We've got audio tapes, we've got text messages, now we've got this caucus meeting as well. And, and no, I think people coast to coast are trying to make sense of it all. Uh, and, and you can only imagine the conversations going on in the Prime Minister's office these days. Yeah, it's fascinating. I mean, it's it's one that I think that political scientists are going to be studying for years to come, how the communications were handled, uh, how the prime minister's uh, office didn't respond quickly enough to what they should have known was a, a looming problem. Uh, the fact that they misread her so badly that she would essentially go, in their view, kind of go rogue and and turn against the governing party. Uh, it, it's really... I, you know, I've been up here a long time, Todd. I, I can't remember a story uh, ever like this where the divisions within one party, and, and not, not a huge division because it's only a small number of people that are really driving this, uh, has, has been so open and so, as you say, absolutely messy. CTV's Glenn McGregor with this breaking news, an emergency meeting tonight at 545 Eastern to discuss the fate and the future of Jody Wilson-Raybould and, of course, Jane Philpott, her colleague and a uh, woman who also resigned from cabinet in solidarity. Glenn, thank you so much for this. We'll talk soon. Hey, Todd.